for when we receive CAD from a customer to prepping the CAD, getting it ready to go for the wire department. We'll go through what engineering does, our thought process on how to process things. Hey guys, Ron Goebbels here from CamWire for Practical Machinist. In the following episode, we're gonna take that those same parts. We're gonna show you how to program them. We'll get them set up on the machine and then uh, wire cut them. These are fairly straightforward, simple parts, but a good starting point to, uh, to develop from there. So here's a very simple punch we need to make. We need to make eight pieces of these punches. Cuts all the way around. Very straightforward D2 material. Just normal run of the day punch. Nothing critical about it. Easy to make. First glance, no issues. We should be able to just uh, process this part however we want to do it and then send it off and away we go. But when we look at it closer, we're going to find some issues and I'm going to show you. Nice radius here, some straights, but here's where I see the issues is right here. This is actually a spline and not arcs because I don't see the definition line here for this radius into this radius back into the corner radius here. It's all one. And something funky is going on with this hole here too. Not sure what it is, but I'm uh, guessing it's splines as well. So there's two ways we analyze it here. I'm going to draw some lines on the faces and then I'm going to do an analysis of that. And I can tell right there that that's a spline because it's all one piece. There's one other way in our software anyway that we can, uh, we can do an analysis. This is kind of funky. We don't always do it that way but you can also see a reflection of what's going on. And this is telling me something's up here. Something's funky going on with, the, with all these lines in here. The best way to do it is to actually analyze the curves. And I'm gonna analyze this one too. And that is also, so it's interesting. This one here is a spline. This back one here is a curve. So we got a bit of both. Now, how does that affect wire cutting? Wires will cut splines with no issues. Because we know this is an important face here, important surface here. When we're wire cutting splines, it's actually almost like a whole bunch of lines that are joined together. And you're going to see that in the wire, wire cutting afterwards. You'll actually see the definitions of those splines. It may be important, it may not be important. From a part quality standpoint, it's not very nice. Sometimes you can't get away <coughs> with turning everything into lines and arcs. Um, but for this process, we have to turn everything into lines and arcs um, because this face is a critical face for what the part that is trimming. So what we do is we'll go back to the customer, we'll make changes, and I'll show you the part that we ended up changing to. So now you can see there's a clean ra radius in here, another clean radius, and another clean radius here. Most of the time, when we change it from lines to, or from splines to arcs, um, there's not much of a difference and we don't need to go back to the customer because you're only talking microns difference. Uh, but sometimes if there's enough variance, then we'll send our data back to the customer to get them to approve it ahead of time. All right, so that's the, the CAD preparation, making sure that you have good lines and arcs, the data is good from your solid so that you can uh, get good data when you're doing your wire programming. This is the foundation of getting a good product. If you don't have the right CAD or clean CAD, then you run into problems later. In a few episodes, we're gonna talk about four axis programming and the uh, very important on making sure your data is clean and proper before you even start programming for four axis. Otherwise, you can run in a lot of headaches. <clears throat> anyway, back to the simple punch. Pretty straightforward again. Uh, I'll go over a few more features. I know this hole here is an, for an ejector hole, so that's not important. We're gonna drill that on the CNC machine. This bottom hole here, that's important. Um, because this is not a headed punch, 
Uh, the customer opted to put a dowel pin through here just to hold it in the punch holder to keep it from falling out. So that dowel pin has to be a nice slide fit, can't be loose. So we're gonna wire cut that one as well. So the question is, we have eight of these to make. We decided we're gonna put them into one block, a mag, what we call a mag block. Pretty straightforward mag block. Eight punches in it, eight start holes. There's our two holes on the side, pretty straightforward. Now, I want to walk you through our process of how we decide how we're going to put things into mag blocks. First of all, does it make sense to process all eight at the same time? Sure it does. One block to run through the mills, heat treating, grinding, makes perfect sense. A few questions to ask. How many start holes do we want? Do you need two start holes? Or are you okay with one start hole? Where to put the start holes? How much space do you put in between the blocks? Why do we have material left around the outside of the block? So these are all questions I'll go through here. We typically like to clamp our blocks right to the table if possible. The co extra cost for material here, negligible. Doesn't change anything in the heat treat cost and it gives us extra material if for some reason one of these punches gets scrapped either by a bad wire cut or the uh, tool maker needs to make a change and we need to cut another one. Well, we got space here for two for sure that already have that side hole put into it. So then it's easy. We just keep this block for, until the project's done and uh, then we have opportunity to cut more block, more parts here. And we could cut a few more here if we had to and add in this, the second hole. All right, uh, how much space to put between blocks? We get designed sometimes where the customer actually makes this mag block themselves and they send it to us. And sometimes we get where they leave minimal distance in here. We typically like to leave minimum an eighth, depending on the size of the punches. Sometimes we'll go up to a quarter inch. The reason for that, we've had times when this is too close and then that webbing as we're wire cutting gets too weak and it starts moving and it'll pull parts and that becomes an issue. We prefer to have a little bit more material here. Again, price is negligible for the security of knowing this punch isn't going to move. The web isn't going to move when we're cutting the second punch creates a, a lot less issues when for a little bit of extra material. Question about start holes. How many start holes to have and where to put them? That seems to be uh, an art that a lot of people haven't figured out. And it doesn't matter how many times we tell our customer <laughs> where to put start holes and try to train them when they send us mag blocks. It never seems to work and we usually end up hole popping our own holes in there. These blocks, because we were responsible for making the punches, we could design the mags. So I'll go through our thought process of why we put the start holes where we do. And um, just give you some tips on what to think about when you're putting start holes in your blocks. So we put the start holes here. And the lead in is going to be on this flat face across here so that we can easily grind this face after heat treat or sorry, after wire cutting. Uh, there's going to be a little tab left on. We are not going to glue these punches in to get rid of the tab. We're going to be, um, we'll just put them on the grinder and just grind them. And the reason for that, the punches are going to be on the grinder anyway, because there is, you can see a four thou, it's about a four or five thou gap here that the tool maker has to grind this edge on. So, they can easily grind the, the tab off as well. We went with one, one start hole for this. You could have gone for two start holes and put one here. Um, we are double skimming these. So we're gonna double skim all the way around and then stop here. Now, sometimes what we'll do, if we only need a double skim on one side, we'll put another start hole here. That will allow us to come down here and we're gonna be able to double skim this and actually, so sorry, there'll be two start holes, one start hole here and one start hole here. 
That'll allow us to double skim this face, come back, do our turnarounds, and then we could do a one burn if, say, we wanted to do a one burn all the way around the rest of the part. Again, our tabs would still be here and here. Easy to grind off. Unless you decide to glue it in, then you, you could glue it in and then uh, easily do the skims and you wouldn't have to worry about <coughs> the tabs. Never, ever, ever, if at all possible, put a start hole so it starts on a radius. Um, we've had lots of blocks come in from, from customers where they have to put the start hole where the radius is and then you either got to glue it in, adds more cost for them, or you got to try and grind the tab off and that gets difficult. So we avoid whenever possible not to put start holes here. Now, the other thing to consider when you're doing start holes is you know, these parts are small, so they're not going to move in the mag as very much. But if you get really long parts, you got to consider where to put the start holes and how many to put in because is the part gonna gonna move when you're wire cutting it in the block? Because it will pull, depending on the material type, it can pull towards the gap, depending on where you're wire cutting and what um, kind of material you are wire cutting. So that's something else to take into consideration. Down the road, if we get a block that's really long, um, I'll go through that with you and, and our thoughts behind that. This is how we would process this block. I'm going to show you another block. It's for the same project. Very simple little punches. In fact, the start hole is almost as big as the punches. <laughs> same idea. One wire start hole. We're going to come off the tangency point here. We're going to burn around. And we're going to do actually two two skims on this one too. So we're going to start here. We're going to burn around. We're going to stop 50 thou before the wire came in and that'll be our little tab to hold. We're going to burn around, skim, skim, and then we're going to part off. Then the toolmaker is going to take these and grind that little tab off as well. Some people like to put the start holes in the middle. We like to put it on the tangency point because it's a little bit less um, protrusive, protrusive and easier to blend in than putting it in the middle. And for our for this purpose, it was we could not put it in the middle because it would affect part condition. Uh, this face here, this particular face. This face and this face were very important on the, to the customer. The back side here, not so much. So that's why we put the start hole and we would put our lead in here. Again, these, these punches here had holes going in to hold the dowels in, so we wire cut those as well. Clamp it to the table. We could have got away with putting this in a vise and holding it. But uh, we figure we are going to need to make some more punches, possibly, um, with shape changes during development. So we have enough here that we can get a couple of rows of punches out of here if needed. So that's how we process our mag blocks, making sure the CAD data is right. And let me show you the CAD on these ones. So we know this is all nice lines and arcs it's going to wire cut properly and the same down here because these punches are so small they actually opted to do a half moon in here instead of doing a, uh, a full hole so just to recap important to get your data right right up front so you don't have splines like this or a hole where half of it is an arc and half of its splines. Very important to get that trued up and so it's lines and arcs. That way it gives you a quality wire cut that your customer is going to be happy with. You're going to be proud to give to your customer and everybody's happy. So next episode we're going to talk about taking these parts. I'm going to show you how to program them. 
We're going to set them up on the machine and get them cutting, and then I'll show you the results afterwards. Hope you enjoyed this episode of Learn to Burn. Leave your comments below. Love to hear how you guys would process parts like this at your shop. Next episode, we're going to actually sit down and program these parts, show you how to set them up on the machine, and uh, we're going to wire cut them. And this is just very basic level stuff. Keep those spools turning and those wires burning. And we'll see you next time.